Hi everyone, welcome to Golang 101 course. Uh, we are going to learn about what Golang is and how we code it. So let's start. Introduction Golang is a statically uh, typed compliant programming language which designs at Google. It is used for developing high performance software, web applications, and network programming. The history of Golang it is developed by Robert Grismer, Robert Pike, Rob Pike, and Ken Thompson at Google. Uh, we can say that uh, Golang is developed by Google. And it is first released in 2009. Golang is influenced by C, Pascal, and Obero languages, and it is designed to be simple, reliable, and efficient. The use cases, uh, as you see, there are some. There are several uh, use cases of Golang. One of them is cloud and network services, uh, command line interface, which means CLIS, web development and development operations and site reliability engineering. There's um, lots of technology companies which use Go. Uh, of course, Google, because it is the uh, founder of Go. PayPal, American Express, Meta, Microsoft, Netflix, Twitch, and Uber. Also, uh, Twitter. Uh, we can say that. How can we go? How can we download to go? Uh, to download Golang, go to the official Golang website at go.dev, which means the development, and click on the download go button to access the download page. Uh, choose the appropriate download package for your operating system and processor architecture which means uh, which operating system you use Microsoft, MacOS or Linux or the other operation systems and follow the instructions instructions to install Golang on your system everyone we are continuing to Golang one on one course so let's do a hello world project before starting the video, I have created a folder which is called Golang 101 and on the, this folder I have created a main.go project uh, file, sorry. But uh, while making a project in Golang, first, we first need to enable dependency tracking. So I will create a Golang module for this. The name of this module is usually like github.com sorry github.com slash your username but since this will be a basic level training i want this module uh, to be named a tutorial so i will open any terminal on here and let's say go mods in its tutorial And as you can see, the Golang module is created by the program. Now we can do a Hello World project. First, we need to define a package. Since this folder will be our home folder, I will name it main, as you see. Next, I need to create a function for this. I will create a function named main. Func main. Okay. This function will be a function which will run when I run my main.go file. Now I need to get a text hello world as an output. So I want to use the FMT library for this. FMT dot and I will write Prince Alan for this. And let's say hello world. I save the file. As you see, there is no error for now. And, and let's print it. I will say go run 
main.scope. You can see the hello world text in the terminal. Hi everyone again. We continue the Golang 101 training. So in this lesson, uh, I will talk about the variable types in Golang. To specify a variable, we need to write the var statements, the name of the variable and type of the variable. Then we need to equate this variable to a value like five or six or it could be a text like hello but first i want to start with the bool variable type let's say bool boolean a bool value allows us to have a variable take value true or false let's say true or false And I want to make an example, if you want. Let's say variable my tests bool will be equals equals to true. Here I set a bool value which called test, actually my test, sorry, and set this value as true. Now let's look at the output of this value. So I'm gonna say that FMT it's imported it is imported automatically. FMT prints Alan my test. Let's look at the output. So I will say that go run main.go and you can see the output of this of the my test. So uh, let's look at the default value of the boolean. So I'm gonna delete the true and equal sign from here and I will save it and let's print it again so I will say again go run main.go as you can see the value is false here we can understand the default value of bool is false okay let's continue with the uh, integer types so okay Let's say integer, it will be a number. We use integer variable types to specify numbers, and there are multiple integer types in Golang. Like, let, let's say variable and my number int. You can see the other types of integer in Golang. We can sort them as uh, integer 64, integer 32 and else. The numbers next to them determine in which bits the value we will create will be. For example, integer 64 can create a 64-bit value. And these numbers determine the minimum and maximum values of the number which we will create. But I will just use int. So I will uh, I will choose the int and let's say it will be equals to 10 and let's print it again. So fmt print again my number and let's the, look at the output. As you can see the output value appears, appears on the terminal screen. Okay, let's continue with the float types. So I'm gonna put a comment on there. So let's say floats. We have two different options for float values. Let's look at this. Let's say my float. Sorry, my floats. <coughs> One is and um, 32 bits and the other one is 64 bits i recommend you using 64 bits because it's more operational float is basically quite similar to integer but unlike integer float allows to create decimal numbers as well so let's do an example for now let's say 
my float will equals to 10 and let's print it my float let's look at the results in the terminal as you can see it's work but uh, I can also add the decimal numbers on there so let's say it's 10.5 and let's print it again you can see the results in the terminal but the integer doesn't allow it so let's make an example on integer let's remove it and let's say my number is equals to 10.5 pardon me 10.2 and let's remove it and let's print it again as you see uh, we cannot use any decimal number for the integers so if you want to use any integer uh, sorry if you want to use any decimal number for our project we need to use the floats uh, we have two options as, as i said uh, 60 uh, it's gonna be 32 bit or 64 bits okay let's continue with the string types and let's comment it I'm gonna say string and there will be text. The string that type allows us to specify text as variables. We can specify any objects and number as text, but we cannot use numbers specified as text in mathematical operations. Okay, let's do an example. Let's say a variable my text will be equals to five sorry i forgot to write string as you see i write the five over here but i cannot use in op mathematical operations because it is not a number it's just a text so let's print it let's say fmt dot print and my text okay let's execute it you can see the results in the terminal. Okay, let's continue with the multiple values. So I'm gonna put a comment on here. Okay, what are the multiple values? So multiple values. So let's say we have uh, x and y values like x int equals to 10 and var y int equals to 15. We can assign this for this variable as we did in previous example like this. So let's print it again. fmt dot print then x and I will copy it and paste it here and I will replace it with y. So I save it and let's print it. You can see the values on here. So how we can show these values in a single line? For this, it will be enough to put the x and y values on the same line and put a comma between them. So I will delete it and I will put a comma and I want to say this is y. And I have to put a comma over here and let's say it's 15. Okay, we can do this uh, multiple. We can do this this way. So x gonna be equals to 10 and y gonna be equals to 15. So let's print it. Yes, you can see the results over here. So, by the way, it's possible to show these variables without specifying the data type. The data type is here. So, I can delete it and I can also delete the vi var. And just I want to need put a colon in front of the equal sign like this sorry 
like this. It makes more easier for our projects to define variables and let's print it. As you can see, we have simplified the example we made earlier. Also, uh, there is one more way to assign multiple variables to values. We can do this by putting all variables in a common parenthesis. Also, variable types can be different from each other. Okay, let's make an example. Let's say I'm gonna put a comment over here, then let's say variable, and I will use a common parenthesis, and let's say x equals to 10, and y equals to 15.5. It's gonna be integer, and it's gonna be a float. And I want to use a string, and let's say that z equals to hello, and that's gonna be string. Okay, let's print it. Let's say fmt dot print then x sorry print then x. I will copy this and paste it and let's say this is y and let's say this is z okay i'm save it and let's execute the project and you can see the results over here and also i don't need to use uh, use it like this i can use also uh, i can use Determine all the variables in one print element. I just need to put a comma between them. Let's say x, comma y, and put a comma again. And let's say this is y z. Let's remove it. And let's print it again. You can see the results in the terminal. Okay, let's continue with the constant values. And uh, a variable type which we can use a frequent lingo length is constants. And let's put a comment and let's say constants. Constants are cannot be changed, cannot be changed. Constant variable type doesn't not allow the values we set as constant to be changed again. In the other words, it allows the creation of the immutable values. Like, let's say, constants. Let's say the name is my constants. Is equals to 5. So, I'm gonna print it. Let's say, fmt print ln my constants. Let's execute the program in terminal. Yes, we can result the we can result the five in terminal. So I'm gonna try to change it. Let's say my constant is equal to four. As you see, the program doesn't allow it because it is assigned as constant. So let's print it. Let's try to print it. As you see, I cannot do it. Okay, let's continue with the arrays. So I'm gonna put a comment again. So let's say arrays or array. Ingolang an array is a collection of elements of the same type, which are stored in the contiguous memory locations. The size of array is fixed and specified uh, when it's declared and cannot be changed during on time okay let's create an example let's say my var my array and i'm going to use this parenthesis and let's uh, declare the var type so let's print it fmt dots print ln why cannot use it let's say my array
and let's print it. As you can see, there is not there is not anything in the array because I didn't declare any elements for this array. So let's say that this uh, array has three elements, and let's print it. As you can see, the program has a, a, a program creates zero values for this array because I didn't say anything for these elements. So let's say I want to change these elements. So let's say the first element will be 10 and second one will be 20 and third one will be 30. So yes, I forget to put a uh, equal signal and let's print it. As you can see, my array has the values of 10, 20, and 30. We have determined the size of the array we created as 3, so we can only write 3 elements in it. If we want to write a fourth number, the program will throw an error. And so let's try it. Let's say the fourth element uh, will be 40. And let's print it. And as you can see, a program throw an error. It says index 3 is out of bounds. It means that uh, the array has four elements and it is larger than three. Also, let's try to remove the third element and let's print it. As you see, it works, but the program uh, declared the last element automatically and it is zero. Okay, now. Let's say that we want to find a value in specific index. Uh, index means uh, index start with zero. That means zero index means the first element of this array, and it is 10. And the first index it's, is the second element, and it is 20. So let's say I just want to find the initial index, which means uh, zero. I can say that my array zero and print it. And you can see that uh, the program uh, show the zero index, which means uh, 10. Arrays in Golang are useful for storing and manipulating data and in a fixed site collection. However, they have some limitations, such as the inability to change their size during runtime. If you need a more flexible data structure, you might consider using a slice. Yes, we can say the error array is fixed size and cannot be changed during runtime. Okay, if you want to use a uh, dynamic size, we need to use slice. So let's say it's slice. Okay, let's comment them. And say slice are the dynamic size. Sorry, dynamical size. Dynamically sized. In Golang, a slice is a dynamically sized sequence of elements of the same type. Unlike arrays, a slice can grow or shrink in size during runtime. Slices are built on top of arrays and provide a more flexible way to work with collections of data. So we can say that the slices are mostly common used uh, in the Golang. Okay, let's make an example. Let's say that variable 
my slice and let's say blank parenthesis and let's declare the uh, variable type so it's a, a slice type so let's print it sorry fmc print ln my slice As you see, it's worked. So I don't need to uh, enter any numbers on here. Okay, now let's create another another slice. Let's say var other slice equals to. I will let it empty. Say integer, and let's declare the uh, elements. Let's say one, two, and three. And let's sorry. Let's print them. Let's say fmt dot print ln other slice. You can see the results. So it's a dynamic slice, and I can and it's any elements of this slice. This time I want to add some numbers to these slides which we created. Now let's try adding all of these numbers to the empty slides which we created earlier. To do this we will need to use the append function. So I will say that and my slice is the empty slice will be equal to I will say it append and my slice comes automatically and I need to choose the other slides. As you see, this uh, three dots also comes automatically from the program. And let's print the my slice again. Let's say I can print my slice, and I will also delete them and print it. You can see now the my slice. Is the other slides elements. You can see anything, uh, you can add anything your slice using append function. And let's add a number to my slice using append function again. My slice, and let's say I want to add four. Okay, I will delete it. And put them, put it again, and execute the program. And as you see, the number of four uh, has been added to this slice, which is called my slice. So far, I have talked about creating projects and variable types in Golang, and now I will tell you about the logic of creating functions. There are many functions which we, you can use in Golang, and we can use these functions for various purposes in our projects. Now I will show you how we can uh, create our own function. And let's do the easy one. So I can create a function here, and let's say function and let's say hello. And I will open a curly braces. Okay, now I need to determine the output of this function, and I will also need to use a return uh, statement. So I will say return, and I'm gonna write hello. That means when the program calls. It will throw a hello text. A hello text is the output of this program and it is uh, in string type. So I have to determine its type right there. So let's say it's string. I will save it. And now, and sorry, it should be here. Okay. 
it, it's fixed. So I can call the hello function in here. So let's say fmt. No, I just want to say an output is equals to hello function. And I want to print the outputs. So let's say fmt print an output. And let's execute it. And you can see the hello in the terminal. But, and I can also create a folder and use this function in this folder like this. So I'm gonna remove it. I'm gonna also remove them. So I'm gonna create a folder and say that it is my fun and I'm gonna create a Golang file and let's say uh, sample.go this file extension should be go because we cannot uh, pull the function if the extension is not go let's uh, okay so what's next then uh, i need to write the package name let's say my package my fun it would be better if the name of the folder and the package name are the same like this now it's time to create our function so the name of function must start with the capital letters or uh, you cannot call the function so let's say function uh, let's and define a name and this function will add two numbers and so I want to name is sum now sum As I said again, uh, this function needs to two numbers and this function sum take the sum of the two numbers and uh, return the output of them. So let's say the first number is number one and the second number is number two. So let's declare their variable types. Let's say this is integer and it's also integer and the output will be also integer so let's write the integer over there and let's say the results will be equals to sum of the number one and number two and let's return the results okay we have done all we need to do is the call this function uh, inside of the main function. How can we do this? And if you remember, we have uh, created a module which name is tutorial. We can uh, import any local function using this uh, module name. So let's, uh, uh, let's show it. We can say uh, What's the package of name? I forget it. My func. So let's say my func. As you see, the import tutorial uh, slash my func is imported automatically uh, from the program. We can say that my func. We can choose the uh, function name. And now we can uh, declare the numbers. So I just want to declare the number over here. Let's say this. Let's do a is the first number and let's say it is 12 and b the let's be the second number and it is it should be 18 okay so let's write them in some function a and b and let's and i'm gonna say that it's equals to results equals to my function dot sum and let's print the results 
let's say fmt print ln result okay there is no error for now let's print it the print the output should be uh, 30 let's look at this as you see the output like here and you it is very important to do learn it because we will use uh, this importing methods most of time for our projects and it's very critic to make a pro okay we can continue with the uh, loops in golang loops are used to execute a block of code repeatedly uh, golang provides three types of loops these are uh, let's remove it these are for loops uh, while loops and range loop let's look at the for loop for now for okay i don't want it okay the for loop in golang is used to to iterate a, over a collection of data or to execute a block of code a specific number of times uh, so we can uh, make an example let's say and i will create a for loop the program uh, create an automatic for loop and we all need to declare the counts let's say uh, e equals to zero and if e less less than the five let's it let's change it as five sorry i will delete the count and let's say it's five the loop okay if the and e equals to zero i equals to zero and if i is less than five the loop continues each time the loop rewinds the i value is rewind incremented one by one so let's print the i value for in for loop okay you can see the results it starts with zero because i equals to zero it increments by one it's one two three and four and uh, we cannot see the five because if because the five does not uh, smaller than uh, five is not smaller than five if uh, I put a equal sign over here. We can see the five numbers in the terminal. So let's print it again, and you can see the five number because when I equals to five, uh, this condition will be true. Okay, let's continue with the uh, while loop. Let's comment it, and let's say while loop in Golang there is no specific while loop as you see but you can use the for loop to create a while loop for example and uh, we can say that i equals to zero and for e smaller than 10 that means do uh, this operation while i i smaller than 10 if uh, i can if i won't change a uh, value of i in this loop uh, this loop goes forever and that means it goes for the infinite times infinity times and less uh, we need to pro uh, we need to change this condition and let's say we can print something let's say it is a while loop and also i have to increment the i value like this <laughs> okay let's print it i say go around min.go and program execute the text it's a while loop 
for uh, 10 times because I start with I start on uh, 0 and end on the 9 so but okay let's count it 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 as you see but it should be 10 uh, i don't understand why it's 9 uh, so let's print it again now okay now it's fixed it's 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 okay you can use the while loop like this and let's add a note blank has no while loop but we can create it using for loop that's it okay let's continue with the range loop so i'm gonna put a comment here and let's say the range loop the range loop in Golang is used to to iterate over the elements of a collection such as an array or a slice so we need to create this array to make an example over a range loop so let's say var my array and it's equals to five integers and the elements will be 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Okay, now we can create a range loop. So we have an array. Then let's say for index, comma, and value. Index shows us the indexes of this array, and the value shows us the values of this array. And let's say, this is equals to range my of my array and I will use uh, curly braces as you see the index and the value is not defined so we need to define them so let's say index equals to zero uh, it should be a number because uh, indexes of any er element uh, array and is a uh, number and also the value should be a number so let's say it's zero actually the number of them is not so important i can say that this is 10 and this is 5. this is not important because it will be changed by this uh, range loop so let's print it and let's say fmt.print ln the index of array equals to I use comma to bind text and numbers in Golang. Let's say index and let's do it again for the values. The value of array is value. Okay, let's print it. So I'm gonna say go run main.go. You can see the results uh, in the terminal, but uh, it doesn't show the first index. Let's run it again. I don't understand really. Okay. And let's look at this. And as you see, index starts from zero and the value starts from uh, one because the first uh, elements of the index, uh, sorry, array is one. And as I said before, the indexes of 
any array starts from zero. So the zero index is the value of zero index is one, and value of uh, first in uh, one index is two, and it goes so like this. I hope you understand the um, logic of the range loop. Okay, let's continue with the logical statements. Let's say logical statements. In Golang, logical statements are used to control the flow of execution in the program based on uh, certain conditions. Golang provides the following state, uh, logical statements like, let's say, if, else if, else, and there is a switch condition. And I just want to make a start with the if condition. Let's say if. The if statement in Golang is used to execute a block of code if a certain condition is true. Um, so let's say an example. Let's make an example. Let's say we have a true variables. First one will be uh, i and it equals to 5. And v uh, will be also equals to 5. As you can see, I gave the same value to both variables. Now let's create an equality where these variables provide the true states and see this in the if condition. So let's say if and it's Make an example for me. Let's say e equals to v. I use double equal sign for this. And let's say fmt print ln. Okay, fmt print ln. E and v are. equals to each other so let's print it let's say go run main.go as you see the if condition uh, worked if the this condition is true we can see the uh, the results over here If it's not uh, true, then let's say it's equals to 6 and let's comment it and let's work it again. Go run main.go. As you see, uh, there is not uh, any output of the program. Okay, let's continue with the as if condition. So let's say as if okay then we can use the as if condition if the first condition is false like this and we need to create a condition in cases where we use as if now let's make a, a small change to the example just we made a make a case where the values value of i is not equal uh, equal to the value of v so i'm gonna copy that and pass here and let's uncomment them and i also need this and make uncomment them so and i Uh, I need a uh, as if, so I'm gonna use as if, and let's say v equals to e. The previous one it's worked because the v and i equals to each other because both of them are five. So we can say that fmt dots 
screen seven. E and V equals to each other. And also note that previous previous one is false. As you see, there is an error for the else condition. So I need to uh, write it next to the uh, last curly bracket of the if. Yes. As you see, the. Okay, uh, I also need to be variable. So let's copy it and pass them to, to there. As you see, there is no error anymore. So now let's uh, execute it. Now let's say go around main.co. And as you see, uh, this one is worked. Okay, let's continue with the uh, else condition. So let's say, sorry, let's say else, and they will be the third one. So I will also need this. I will copy them and pass there, and let's comment them. Else is used to when no condition is true. If the if and else if conditions were false, we would have to use an else condition. In else cases, we don't need to specify any condition like this. V equals to i or i equals to 6. So I'm going to write an else condition to next to the last curly bracket of the else if. Like I said before. And let's say fm print ln all conditions is are false. But uh, this condition is true, so I cannot uh, get this one. Let's see this. Go run main.go. As you see, uh, I can. I cannot print this text because this is true. So, uh, as condition not worked, so I need to make this false. So I will use. So I'm gonna say that b not equals to i. So I'm gonna use uh, an exclamation point. An exclamation point indicates that a situation is negative. Uh, so that means v is not equals to i, but it is equals to each other and that's gonna be false these are also gonna be false because i is not equals to six because it is five so i can get the output of this uh, as condition uh, i'm expect that uh, this text gonna be on the my terminal screen so let's print it go run main.go uh, sorry, I forget to save it. Yes, I saved and executed again. As you see, the text over there, over here, all conditions are false because uh, those not uh, true. Okay, let's continue with the uh, switch case conditions. So let's comment them. And let's say switch case. The switch case conditions are a bit different from the else if else uh, conditions. So we need to uh, get a switch variable and we have to create uh, case uh, conditions for this uh, variable. And let's make an example. Uh, let's say let's create an array and let's say this is my array and it's equals to it will have uh, three elements and they will be in type and the variables will be 10 
20 and 30 and let's say and switch on there and let's say the switch will be first element of my array uh, the index starts from 0 so this is the first element and this is the 10 and we need to uh, create conditions uh, for the case uh, previous one I mean in the if we use eq sign eq sign like e equals to 6 in there we not need to uh, use any eq sign we need to uh, we can say this 10 and we can say that for this case for this case uh, or let's say variable is 10 and, when, and we can create uh, another condition uh, I mean another case like 20 and let's say fmt that's print ln variable is 20 we can create uh, multiple cases as many as we want I want to create a uh, three case it depends on you totally fmt print ln variable is 30 also we can create a default like this default is uh, very similar to else we don't need to uh, define any condition on there if uh, those cases are not true uh, the default will be worked and let's say fmt dot print ln none of them are true so let's print it uh, let's say go run main.go and as you see the variable is 10 is printed on the terminal screen so let's make all of these uh, cases cases conditions uh, false let's say this is this is uh, 100 and let's say this is 200 and let's say this is uh, 300 so let's print it again and as you see the none of none of them are true is uh, printed on the terminal screen and i hope uh, you understand the uh, main logic of the logical statements okay that's all okay uh, we have learned something about Colang so far now I want to make a game to make a practice so it's gonna be a rock paper scissors game let's say rock paper scissors game sorry uh, it's a very easy game actually I hope you know how to play it uh, as you know rock beats paper paper beats scissors and scissors beats rock so you have a 32% chance uh, to win so we are going to play against a computer not a hu real human or a artificial intelligence so we need firstly we need to create uh, choices for computer then let's say uh, var choices and it's gonna be a slice so i'm gonna let it empty and uh, the choices are gonna be as uh, in string type and they will be rock paper and scissors okay the computer will uh, pick a random pick a choice of them uh, one of them randomly 
So we need to create a random seat for this. So I'm gonna say uh, random and it is uh, imported uh, from the uh, Golang itself. I'm gonna say random seat and I'm gonna say time that's now. And uh, okay, and it's gonna be Unix Nano, but the time isn't imported. Yes, okay, it's solved now. Let's say Unix Nano, and that's it. So let's create a uh, scores variables for user and computer and let's say user score or let's say user score like this it's equals to zero and also computer score is equals to zero okay we are good so far and let's say hello and welcome to who played let's say welcome to rock paper scissors game and uh, okay now let's create a while loop. As I said before, the Golang has not a specific while loop, so we are going to use a for instead of it. But I'm gonna delete them because you don't need for this, but it is okay. I'm gonna delete them. So I have created my while loop using for and let's uh, create user choice. Let's say user choice is equals to an empty string. And uh, we will use. Uh, no, we are gonna ask to uh, users what will uh, you choose? Choose choice. Sorry. Let's say enter your choice. And we are going to use uh, fmt.scan ln. The scan uh, makes uh, make possible to get input from the user when the program is uh, executing. Uh, so I'm going to say that it is a uh, user choice. Don't forget to use this sign. Uh, I don't know the name of it. So, and also we have to check it if it's valid or not. So I'm going to create a uh, is valid choice. And it's uh, equals to false. And I will use a for loop for this. I let it empty for index. I don't need any index. I use choice. And it will be range of choices. Which I have created before. There, as you see. So I open the curly braces. And let's say if the user choice is equals to choice, um, I'm going to open a curly bracket.
It will be his valid choice will be true. And I will use break for this. Uh, break uh, makes possible to escape from any loop. I mean, if I use break here, the for uh, will be ended uh, from the program. That means uh, we don't need to execute uh, each uh, choices of this slice. If I use break, uh, I can escape from the uh, for loop. I mean, it's a range loop actually. So, undefined choice, let's define it. Choice is a, a string type, so let's say var choice string. Okay. Is valid choice is uh, true, but it says not use it, but it is used. Um, okay. Let's continue it because I'm gonna say that uh, if uh, is valid is not true, so I'm gonna use an exclamation point uh, head of it, head of the is valid choice. That means if is valid choice uh, condition is uh, false. If the uh, choice of the user is not true, uh, we need to say that your choice is wrong. So make a choice again, like uh, invalid choice. Please enter rock, paper, or scissors and i will say continue continue is a bit similar to break uh, break help us to uh, escape from any loop and continue uh, makes possible uh, actually the if we use continue the program will not execute after it and loop starts uh, again, uh, that means if I use it, the program will not execute, which uh, will be written over there, and it starts again uh, from there. I mean, if the void is choice is false, the program uh, will start the while loop over there, as I said before. Okay, now let's continue. Okay, now we need to uh, generate the computer's choice. Computer, as I said before, the computer will pick any choice randomly. So we need to use a random uh, library and we need to use a random function. So I'm going to say that the computer's choice will be equals to Choices, the choices slice over there, and the pro and uh, the computer randomly pick one of them, rock or paper or scissors. So I need need to take the index each of them. So how can I do this? And um, we can say that the choices random dots. Integer length choices length of the choices uh, is three because there are three elements in the slice, but the range of this uh, random integer is between three and two. It won't take the three. Let's say that the range starts from zero and finish on to it will not take three okay uh, as i said before the index starts 
uh, with zero, the zero index is rock and uh, first index is, uh, is paper and second index is scissors. There is no a third index, so in there uh, it will start from zero and finish on two. So we can take uh, zero index or first index or uh, second index of this uh, slice. So computer make a choice with this uh, function. So and let's determine the winner. Let's say sorry. Let's determine the winner. Let's say that if the user choice is equals to uh, computer choice, and let's say that I can see print and then uh, it's a tie. So neither user or nor computer will take a point. So let's say as it. Okay, now let's the, define the conditions which user win. Let's say it as if user choice is equals to rock. And let's say end. I haven't shown it uh, to you before. It is uh, end sign. Uh, I will use a double end that uh, we will use and signed to de determine if the both conditions is true and uh, if you know the uh, logic tables and if you know the uh, or and and signs uh, from your lessons you should probably know it and let's say user choice is rock and computer uh, choice is equals to uh, paper or and this is the or sign uh, I will explain it later okay now let's continue user choice is equals to paper and sorry and computer choice is equals to uh, rock. Okay, uh, it will be scissors. Sorry. Let me check it. Yes, it will be scissors because rock beats scissors and paper beats rock. Or user's choice equals to uh, scissors. And the computer choice is equals to uh, paper. I'm gonna use uh, curly braces for this. Let's say FMT print LN. And let's say that user win. User win. And increment the value of the user, user score, 1. Okay. Now, let's look at there again. What we have done. I clarify the uh, each condition when uh, I have defined each condition if user win. Uh, in there, if user choice is rock and the computer choice is scissors, user beat the computer. Or I haven't shows shows uh, the rock. I mean, user uh, doesn't sh choose the rock, and it, it uh, shows the paper and computer choices is rock. User beats the computer again 
and the last condition uh, user's choice is scissors and the computer's choice is uh, paper user beat the computer again so these are the conditions who uh, user wins so i don't need to uh, clarify every condition which uh, computer win because there are only one option it's a tie option and it's the uh, user win option and the last option is computer win so i can only say the else and let's say fmt print and because it is the last option and this is the uh, computer win and i can increment the value of the uh, uh, computer score one okay now uh, we have done it now let's print the score of the user and uh, computer on the screen and let's say that user score is uh, I'm gonna put a comma and let's say user score on here uh, as I said before I need to use a comma to bind a sync variables and integer variables so and let's continue I'm gonna put comma again and let's say computer score is put a comma and say computer score okay we have done it but uh, there is a problem on there i don't understand what's the problem let me check it okay okay it's fixed no it's not fixed okay let's uh, execute the program let's say go around main.co okay it's working so enter your choice uh, let's say uh, uh, let's say rock now okay uh, I need to I don't uh, I cannot use a capital letter I need to say rock as you see I win uh, user score is 1 and computer score is 0 but as you say the program is not finished because it's in a while loop so I cannot ex ex uh, escape from the while loop so I need to uh, clarify a definition to escape from the uh, while loop or uh, by the way uh, okay okay uh, sorry and let's exit and uh, okay while loop ends here and okay let's ask the user if he wants to play again or not uh, let's say var ask user string and let's ask the question to user do you want to play again and in parentheses let's define the conditions yes or no y means yes and n means no and again let's print a input from user let's use scan and signs and ask user if user says ask user equals to y 
Uh, actually, we don't need to use it. Or uh, let's say it's continue. As if, let's say, as if ask user equals to n, it will be break. Yes. If a uh, user uh, enter the n to the terminal, uh, I can escape from the uh, while loop. And also, uh, let's print. Thanks for playing on there. Let's say if empty print ln. Thanks for playing. Okay, let's execute the program again. Enter your choice. Let's say paper. Ivan. Uh, now let's say rock. No. Oh. Okay. Yes, I forget to uh, say that if the input net neither y nor n, we need to ask it again to user. Uh, so, how can I do this? Let me check it. I need to create a while loop or not. So let me check it. Okay. Okay. Uh, I think that think that if the user wants to play it should say yes uh, he doesn't need to say no uh, to escape from the while loop if it's why uh, yes he can uh, continue to playing or i don't need to uh, declare it or he uh, can escape from the uh, while loop. Okay, let's play it again. Go run main.go. Enter your choice. My choice is rock. It's tie. Do you want to play again? I say blah blah blah. Blah blah. And you see, uh, I can escape from the while loop. And the uh, program is finished. And you see the thanks for playing text on the uh, terminal. So let's play it again. Now, now let's say scissors. I win. Do you want to play again? Let's say yes. And the game starts again.